Good day, viewers. Welcome once again to your favorite program, The Conversation, coming to you from TV360 here in Lagos, Nigeria. My name is Nelson Ekujimi, and I have here with me in the studio as a fellow panelist on The Conversation, Peter Clever a public affairs analyst. Peter, you are welcome to the program. Thank you. Yes, um, before we commence the program, I want to express our condolences and sympathy to the government and people of uh, Bono State over that uh, catastrophe of a flood. I saw the images and, you know, it was art rendering. Uh, I just pray that uh, God will provide the means to take care of the, the thousands, if not uh, about a million of people who have been internally displaced. You can imagine a situation like that where even we had that uh, um, inmates at the correctional center are out there that animals in the zoo are also out uh, crocodiles, snakes. So the likelihood of uh, those animals attacking and killing people is very high. And uh, uh, as at this morning, we had that uh, close to 30 people have died. Okay. <laughs> Not to talk of uh, uh, thousands that have been displaced. The, the level of flooding there is unprecedented. Uh, it's a sad development for us. We just hope uh, that uh, the authorities would be able to muster enough uh, resources. And of course, we expect the outbreak of some diseases like cholera Absolutely. and so many yes. other waterborne diseases. Diseases, you know? yes, yes. Uh, it's really <laughs> so the, 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 the contribution of that state yeah. to the national economy will be greatly hampered because sure. farmlands have been you know, totally wiped out. Yeah. So you can imagine the economic and human loss that we, we, we are suffering. It's a yeah. sad one. Uh, we pray that God will, you know, recompense those who have lost. Yes, well, sir. thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, you are welcome to the program, The Conversation. And uh, today, like we know, The Conversation is a topical issue program on current happenings within Nigeria and outside. And the uh, top of the bill today, we are going to look at um, the present uh, economic situation of the country. Uh, as we speak today, it's a fact that uh, the economy, even though the indices on paper looks bright, but realistically speaking, Nigerians are feeling the pinch. Uh, why do I mean this? The purchasing power of the average Nigerian is greatly hampered by the rising cost of goods and services. And uh, a critical factor that has influenced uh, cost of goods and services is the cost of uh, energy to move from one point to the other because uh, whatever you produce on the farm or even in the, or to even make to even produce in the factories you need energy in terms of uh, uh, petrol or diesel but sadly for me is that uh, a lot of persons don't seem to understand how we got here how we got here is a function of the fact that over the years things that we're supposed to have done, we left them unattended to. Now we are facing the reality. And what is the reality? Mr. President, in a broadcast early this year, I think uh, on May 29, or, or June 12, uh, Democracy Day broadcast, made it very clear to us that the government since inception has been spending 97% .97 of revenue servicing Debts inherited from its predecessors, not predecessor, predecessors, and that they have been able to reduce it to 60, is it 68 or 64 percent? So, anybody who is dispassionate, who is patriotic, we know that definitely the hard times are here because we didn't plan for our today from yesterday. Because if the government had not, you know suspended maybe half of the subsidy that they were paying. You can imagine what that 3% will have been able to do. Because that 3% is shared between the federal government, the state governments, as well as the local governments. So if, that, if the government had not been frugal enough, had not been prudent, that means that 3%, if it was not huge enough, that 3% will be such that federal government, 
state governments and local government workers will not have been receiving their pay. And we should not also forget the fact that when President Muhammadu Buhari assumed the reins of power in 2015, about 22 states were owing backlog of salaries. So President Muhammadu Buhari saved our economy from collapse by you know, ensuring that the, he got a Paris uh, loan as well as uh, other loans to give to the states to be able to pay their workers because it is when people receive salaries that economic activities can bolster. Because if I receive salary, for example, I won't eat my money. I will give my wife to go to the market, maybe make her hair, go and buy shoes, buy bread, buy butter, buy rice, buy beans, and put in the house. And the woman who receives it by selling bread will also not put the money in her mouth. It, apart from the fact that she will use it to restock her, her shop or her business. She also uses it for other domestic you know, activities, and that is what makes the economy go round. So I think it is important why we are stating this fact is that a lot of persons don't seem to understand where we are coming from. They think economy is just run by magic. Maybe, oh, the president should have just decreed that the price of uh, petrol should come down, which we know that the president doesn't even have the powers at all because the, pres the president never told us he's a magician. And we don't expect that uh, because I, I read somewhere where... One uh, elder statesman said, uh, President Bola Metinu is not the measure we are looking for. And I was like, here we go again. In 1994, former president and head of state, uh, Ulushe Gomba Sonjo, after she Kiabela won the 1993 June 12 presidential election, went to Arari, Zimbabwe, and said, Abiola is not the measure we are waiting for. And uh, yours sincerely, just like millions of Nigerians took him up on that and said, look, we were not looking for a Messiah because we're not promised one. We're only looking for a mortal like ourselves who can help improve our situation. And the same thing applies in this case. President Bola Metunubu is one man. Like uh, Lee Chief M. Kiyabula said, he said his father told him that there's nobody like a foreman that is a scam when they say somebody is a foreman, that one man one man is one man. In your country, I'll be in this house, I say, in your country, you're going to be a foreman. You're going to be a foreman. You're going to be a foreman. So, so <laughs> the situation we have found ourselves is one that I can say categorically that uh, everybody is feeling the pinch. I was telling you while we were coming to the studio that um, some of my journey these days by, tra by, trans by logistics, I do it by public transportation system. The other day I went to the island from uh, Agege, and I never knew that uh, the BRT bus was that uh, comfortable. I went to the BRT uh, terminal, I bought a cowrie card, I bought that cowrie card for 600 naira, and my journey from uh, Yanokpaja to uh, TBS, that's Tafa Baliwa Square, on the island, it was just 800 naira. And I went smoothly, and I, and I said, wow. And I think we must commend the Lagos State Government. If you look at the blue rail, blue rail line, as well as the red rail line, there's no, somebody was telling me that in UK or in other uh, uh, climbs, there's no reason for you putting your car on the road. Because the cost you will incur alone will kill you. So a lot of us are learning that lessons now. We are saving our cars in order to be able to play our roles in our homes. Yeah, let me take it off from there. You see, um, like you said, um, we as Nigerians have to learn to cut our expenses. Cut our expenses. I know millions will be offended by that statement. They will tell you, what are we doing? What exactly are we doing? And that takes us to the economic situation we are facing as a country. I can say categorically that most Nigerians have shown some level of understanding with the president and the government on what brought us this far. Otherwise, when during inauguration the president announced that subsidy is gone, yeah. it would have elicited a lot of reactions. The Nigerians said, okay, maybe because they had not known the implications of that statement as at that time. But with time, you have seen, this is one year getting to one and a half years. That's, uh, that means they have understood 
that this is what it is all about. Understanding is one thing, bearing is another thing. And now that now leads us to bearing. It is an understatement to say that Nigerians are suffering. Nigerians are going through a hell lot. And uh, I don't think that was the intention. When you ask uh, the president, I don't think that was his intention. Now, having gotten this far, how do we mitigate it? Because when we look at it practically, his tenure is going. And within a tenure, you set an objective. This is what we want to achieve. And you set, at the you end set of timelines. The day, yes, at the end of the day, it will tell us towards improving the lots of the people. I spent so much time yesterday reading a lot of reactions from some American newspapers about the debate between uh, Trump and the Kamala Harris. Uh, Democratic and uh, Republican candidates. Candid presidential you know, candidates. Yeah. What I was more interested in is the reaction, that is, uh, comments of, of the people to the news itself. And everything bothered to the recurring question that was being asked is, uh, uh, how has been your lot within these uh, three and a half years? And that is a relevant question nobody can wish away with. Oh, absolutely, yes. Very so true. I believe what we are passing through now beckons on the government to be more creative. In what way, in what way do you mean Creative in terms of dealing with this situation to produce results. Because the results are not there at all. No, no, Peter. The results are not there. Let us face the facts as it is. Because when you look at it, that uh, subsidy went and... Uh, no, subsidy has not gone, Peter. Well, well that, was what, that was what we had. No, it the, was until recently. Because of this untidy fuel no, situation no, and all those things. Peter. Then NPC now told us, hey, we incurred the $6 billion no, no, no. Uh, cost. No, Peter, here. Peter. Yes, we have to. Peter, uh, don't... Subsidy was gone. Wait, wait. As wait. I, the morning of 29th May, hmm. 2018. There was, there was no, no uh, Peter, <laughs> what <laughs> Mr. President said, <laughs> from my own understanding, <laughs> I won't speak for any other person, <laughs> is that... As subsidy a, is gone. That subsidy was not in the budget. Yes. Yes. You know, the budget of 2023 passed uh, Forget this, that. The yes. president said subsidy is oh, gone. Oh, no, that oh, was oh, what Nigeria oh, took oh, away Hold on, Peter. The, I, uh, I know uh, the president uh, said so. Uh, but uh, let us situate the fact. Uh, is that in preparing the 2023 budget mm -hmm. by the previous administration, yeah. the provisions for subsidy was only uh, made for within five months. Okay. So definitely by the sixth month, yes. because that administration was going to uh, end exit this tenure in five months. In five months. Yes. So when this administration came in, yes. the president said subsidy was gone. Yeah. But you and I know, if you have followed the mm -hmm. oil industry, you and I know that the subsidy that we are talking about, just like President Muhammad Dubari, mm -hmm. when President Muhammad Dubari's administration made provision for subsidy, mm -hmm. was, was because that subsidy, unlike what obtained mm -hmm. during the tenure of his predecessors, yeah. where anybody will go and import fuel yes. and say, under President Momo Dubari for his eight-year tenure, yes. the importation of fuel was done solely NNPC. by NMPC. Yeah, they even settled the cost. Yes. The cost were settled an internal NMPC. Yes. yes. So we must get, we, because the essence of us... I know what said, no, no, you know, the, the, <laughs> what we are discussing here is not between me and you. I know. It's for the public. Yes. The discerning public. Sure. So, unlike then, when people will... Uh, Nelson, could you mean we come? Peter Kwara will come. We go to NMPC, present uh, an invoice. Mm -hmm. I've imported 2 million metric tons of uh, petrol. Yes. Meanwhile, I didn't import anything. Yes. You know, but under this one, it was solely NMPC and it's, you know, oil. And that will now take us to NMPC. Yes. What is NMPC? NMPC has shown that it is a conglomerate of rot. No, I disagree. I say that and I keep yeah. saying that. I disagree. Yes, because right now there is a fuel situation. Yeah. Because most of this, in the drivers of this, in what people give you as an excuse mm. for the inflation most is the uh, cost of oil. You know, it's also what, part of it that, now. It's also part it's of, also of part it. Of I'm, the, I'm it coming. I'm coming. Now, presently, yes. presently, there is an unexplainable fuel situation, which I no, cannot it's explainable. Even, uh, which I cannot even reconcile no, myself. No, yes, it's unexplainable it's, fuel situation, whereby fuel is costing in some cases in some states. 1,200 naira a liter. Yes. yes, people are not even seeing the fuel. No, what is the, no, what is the Peter, meaning? Yes, yes. Wait, I we have to address those things. I know. We are living in a practical environment. Yes, yes. I, I agree with you. Mm -hmm. You see, 
I've been, in the last uh, couple of years, okay. I've been following the oil industry religiously that you would think maybe I want to own an oil block or I want to set up a refinery. Okay. What is the situation is yeah. that we have a PIA okay. signed by President Muhammad Buhari in 2021. Yes. Under that PIA, the oil industry has become regulated. Okay. But we are running a regulated deregulation. Yeah. Why do we have this crisis? Is okay. that NNPCL, because of forex okay. uh, scarcity, yeah. all the other oil majors okay. and importers yeah. refuse to lift, to okay. go and import petrol. Okay. Reason being that... Now remember we said an NPC have been the sole importer of petrol. No, no, be, uh -huh. because... Yes. You know why NNPC became the sole importer of petrol? Uh -huh. You know, is with the government backing. Okay. The government told any other person that if you bring petrol here yes. to sell, yes. you can't sell it above this A amount. Certain pump price. So, yes. and don't come and meet us for any refund. Okay. So, when people recognize that if I source for Forex yes. to import fuel, by the yes. time I bring it in, okay. it's above the amounts that will make me, you know, make profits. Okay. Everybody abandoned that business. Okay. So it became the role of the NNPC. Okay. As a, you know, the NNPC was set up as a national security organization. It's not, okay. NNPC is just, not just there to import fuel okay. for energy security. And that role... It's not, it's not supposed to import fuel. No, no. Okay. I mean, when NNPC I mean, came I mean, so, about, we have uh, uh, refineries that we are running. Our refineries, uh -huh. we've had this problem yes, since... under 19... the same NNPC. We, That's what we are saying. We are, the, our refineries became moribund under the military administration. Uh, okay. Yes. Okay. So what we are saying here, because we, we have to be very clear, yeah. is that and under the PIA mm. Section 64, Okay. NNPC is the supplier of last resort okay. for energy security of the country. Yeah, okay. Because others were not bringing it in. Yeah. NNPC was the only one. Don't forget that our refineries, four refineries, have become moribund. Yeah. Whether we want to play the ostrich or not, yes. the fact remains that, that those refineries yes. were destroyed and killed by Nigerians. Okay. No matter whether, where, where they are working is irrelevant. Okay. Nigerians were the ones who collapsed those refineries. Okay. Just like Nigerians collapsed Nigerian National Shipping Line. So many of them. So many yes. public utilities. Yes, yes, Nigerians are the, they are the bane of their, of their of our situation. Yes. So, every other person abandoned that rule. Mm -hmm. NNPC was the only one bringing the fuel now. Mm -hmm. When NNPC brings the fuel, mm -hmm. NNPC does not have a personal storage tank. Don't okay. forget. Okay. All the all the uh, depots okay. have been vandalized. The okay. pipelines to run fuel from uh, the terminals to the depot okay. can no longer work. Before, uh, I think at the point in time, the then um, Minister of State for um, uh, for Petroleum, yeah. uh, Mr. Uh, Dr. Ibe Kachuku, if okay. you remember, okay. where he told us that any time they pump into the pipelines, yeah. the level of vandalism okay. is unprecedented, that they stop pumping. They have okay. to look for alternatives. Okay. So what are we saying is that in a country of 220 million, yeah. how can only one organization be the supplier? Okay. And you and I know for free mm. that NNPC mm. as an organization is limited in terms of manpower and resources. Mm. How many petrol stations does NNPC have? Mm. How many trucks do they have to lift the products out? Mm. And you and I know that we, don't, we no longer transport uh, petrol mm. by pipelines. Okay. The pressure on our roads. Just uh, some three days ago, okay. a petrol tanker fell in Niger State. Okay. Why did it fall? I was watching the news. People were saying it was because of the bad road. It killed over 50 people lost their lives okay. trying to scoop fuel and what have you. Okay. So if we were serious people yeah. and we had structured our industry the way it's supposed to be, okay. we, our refineries are working. Okay. The refineries in uh, Port Harcourt. Let's 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 get back to track. No, let's we are still on track now. Uh, yeah. But, no, but, but we know we must be uh, situating the issues you, now. You, because you said if our refineries are working and all those kind of things, I don't think I think we have to get to the point we are in now. Yes. Our refineries are not working. Yes. 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 And our uh, NMPC is it's important. Yes. Why had we now be bogged down by unexplainable first? Crisis in this the country. NMPC. At this age in our no, no, history. Peter, yes. We mm. said it that this mm. crisis of fuel shortages, mm. if you look back in history, mm. there's no administration that we are, you and I have lived under mm. 
Mm. That we never saw, we never went through this. The Buhari day. government never went through any fuel crisis until the tail end of the ad, uh, administration, when the allegation was that they wanted to stop Tinubu. Okay, that, uh, that was why uh, the uh, fuel uh, uh, crisis uh, uh, came uh, uh, about. Okay, yes, P Peter. For the for okay. the seven okay. years, okay. Okay. Wait, wait, there was Peter. no fuel crisis. Okay, wait, Peter. Country. Yes. If you say tail end of mm. Buhari's administration, yes. If you are writing a thesis, okay, will you take away that tail end and put it for another? administration the, 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 you you cannot maybe let us even let, let let us even take it over that you have eight years yeah. maybe for six months of your yeah, yeah. which is about after seven and a half years success yes, yeah. you have succeeded no 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 it's you not about succeeded. no it's not about success yeah. yes of course. Um, no 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 yes, Don't, no no i disagree i think we are no, Peter, I disagree. it's not about success so mm. what we are saying here is that NMPC. Let's not make an Wait, excuse now, for something um, that is no, not No, we must level. explain it. And let us go to the track. You say about the economic crisis. We have not even taken up. No, we are we, uh, the, okay. the, the major issue affecting um, um, almost all of us today, the one critical factor responsible for the economic crisis is the petrol energy now. Mm -hmm. uh, if, we are if we solve our energy mm -hmm. problem, We'll solve all our problems. <laughs> That's laughable. How Why? Why do you say how, laugh? how can it be that if we solve all our problems? No, I'm speaking metaphorically the, now. Uh, uh, about, it's not. It's uh, not. Uh, it's uh, just uh, one of them. No, nah, but it's a, it plays a, major, it plays about, a major role. When we are talking about economic crisis, yes. I used to say that maybe the actions of the government. Now, are we even talking about the uh, uh, power issue? We are. Uh, that's the tariff. Electricity tariff has been hiked up to 400%. And people are being forced under that electricity tariff. You know? And people cannot afford no, power. Let's, let's, let's leave that no, for No, there are so many things. There are so many things. No, let's leave that for Are we no, talking wait, about... Peter, because Peter. I thought this is about... Peter, economy. wait. Maybe wait. an NPC is another... Peter, stance. wait. Let us leave okay. it for the second stanza. Okay. Let us take it one after the other. Okay. Let's, let's not... Because if we start that now, okay. we won't go far with it because of time. Okay. Uh, what we are saying is that NNPCL... Because you know they became a limited liability. You know, I told you that it's a cesspool of corruption. Yes, uh, that's which what you said. You don't agree. No, uh -huh. no, no, no. NNPC has always been accused of. Mm -hmm. But you see, with the PIA, mm -hmm. NNPC activities have become regulated. In okay. the past, mm -hmm. I agree with you totally. Mm -hmm. Even as we speak today, and as are today they are not. No, as we speak today, uh -huh. questions are still being asked. Mm -hmm. And we should also not run away Bigger from Bigger questions. Yes, and we should Bigger also not... Question, because no, their operation have... as a date is so obtuse. Yes. It's so obtuse. We, 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 today, you know, even yes. this present administration mm -hmm. has made it mandatory that oil receipts okay. and gas receipts should no longer be domiciled in NNPC. It should okay. be domiciled with CBN for, oh. for transparency oh. sake. Okay. So, I'm not lost on the fact that okay. NNPC has been accused of Several things. Okay. I will not be here to speak for them. Yeah. So it is for NMPC to clear its name. The, uh, yeah. the, so, but for me, mm -hmm. some things that are clear to me, mm -hmm. I will explain it. It's for you to interrogate my analysis. Okay. Yes, because okay. I'm not infallible. Okay. My analysis is that NMPCL at a point in time mm -hmm. came out and said they are having liquidity crisis. Mm -hmm. And it was that liquidity crisis mm -hmm. that made them to say, look, we can no longer bear this burden. Mm -hmm. That is why they have increased the uh, price of uh, petrol yeah. at the pumps. Mm -hmm. So for me, if we want to interrogate that, mm -hmm. it is for us to ask for the books. Mm -hmm. How much did it cost you to take crude oil there if you took crude oil there? Or how much did it cost you? Let us let yes. us even know what you realize. How you realize them vis a vis yeah, what you yes. yes. So but those these, but these things are all still shrouded in secrecy. They come out with any figure that they like. They tell us maybe at the end of the day, as as a a, a a guise to increase energy crisis. And people are people are not finding it very funny. Yet we are getting to a point where things are getting. Oh, uh, 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 more costlier for people to be at, like the energy crisis. You you can imagine we'll go, we'll go to, you we'll can go to imagine the, the level of that. inflation, the level of inflation. This will spur on the economy. Okay, well, uh, thank you very much, Peter, because uh, we've run out of time on thank this uh, discussion. Uh, yeah. It's not an issue we can you know exhaust. Yeah, uh, within, the a, limited within a limited time, it's yeah. something we would continue to talk over and over again. Okay. Uh, I thank you for your contributions on this program. Uh, well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for 
stay tuned to the conversation. Uh, that has been our episode for the, for the day. Till we come your way again next time, please continue to watch the conversation coming to you from TV360 here in Lagos, Nigeria. Thank you and have a great day. Bye-bye.